a few items on flexible connections. There are a number of ways to pull heat from a sample. Um, I'll just go through a couple of these examples. So we've got braids. Now braids are good. Braids are, braids are easy. You can buy something off the shelf. It, uh, it's, it's relatively easy to attach. A few things to just be cautious of with braids. Braids are, are it will be bare copper. copper. So in, in the case of bare copper, it is oxidizing. It's, ox it's begun oxidizing immediately. The more you handle it with your fingers, the more it will oxidize. And over time, it will, it will oxidize more and more. Now, if you look at one of these small wires that make up a braid, if you look at it closely under a microscope, you'll notice that it, it, the surface of it is not smooth. In fact, it looks a little bit more like Velcro than, than a smooth surface. Now that's important because when you're looking at vi when you're talking about vibration isolation, you're, it's important that you have uh, a very flexible um, material. Now, if every one of those wires has a surface that's a little bit like Velcro and the oxide is growing as time as time continues, then you'll have a uh, a bonding and a uh, an interface between each wire that actually adds to the stiffness. So although this is a technique that's easy to do, uh, it, it may not work as well as you need for a high performance application and it may not last the test of time. It may need to be replaced over time. So uh, something to watch out for. Wires and straps are also good options uh, for uh, for vibration isolation and flexible connections. Gas is also an option. Now the, the strength of using gas, something like helium gas to transfer heat, you know, the good news is that it has very good vibration isolation. It doesn't transfer force through the thermal link if it's a gas. However, that's not the whole story. That's only half the story. Remember that a good thermal link will not only have good vibration isolation, but it will also have good conductance across the thermal link. And so this is where gas is not such a, uh, a strong thermal link because the conductance across it is, is small. So you may size up your cryocooler. However, uh, if your heat load at your sample, as we saw before, goes up, then you, you build a gradient of, of temperature across the gas and your sample temperature goes up and it doesn't matter how big your cryocooler is. So uh, that's, that's important things to remember. <laughs>